and thank you for joining with us today. Uh, as uh, Adish described, at Linbase, our mission is to support educators, and we have been having numerous conversations with educators about the future of education and how we can improve the teaching learning experience. So that is, this is our daily routine. Through these discussions, we always gaining valuable insights into the current and upcoming needs of the higher education sector. Now we have come to realize that this is a, there is a need to need more clarity and understanding of the NEP 2020 and the UGC's new guidelines on the UG program. These guidelines are not just about policy and regulations, but about shaping the future of our country because it's going to be a huge change uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the higher education sector. So we believe this panel discussion will provide uh, answers to more answers to these questions. And uh, we are exciting to hear from your expert panelists on this particular topic. So we collected a few questions uh, uh, from different academicians and different educators. So we can directly go, go to the East questions. So I think everyone is, uh, I mean, ready. Uh, sir, Anil sir, Melin sir, Sujaman, and uh, Sir, Rajesh sir. Yeah, okay. So can we start the question, sir? Yeah, okay. So the first question we received is, uh, NEP is saying, recognizing, identifying, and fostering the unique capabilities of each student to promote his or her holistic development. So it means we need to address each student's uh, needs uh, carefully. That is its uh, the vision. What can we do as university for achieve this vision? So, uh, Malin sir, so what's your thought on this particular uh, question, Malin? Uh, Adash, uh, you have to unmute unmute him, sir. Yes, yes. Please unmute all the panelists. Okay. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, greetings from St. Joseph's University. Uh, my thought on this question is uh, that uh, our universities uh, are quite massive. Uh, in general, higher education system in our country is quite massive. And I think one of the challenges uh, that we will face would be that in terms of infrastructure, because NEP demands that we have a flexible curricula, also have interdisciplinary and uh, multidisciplinary, as well as vocational training courses in our universities. The other uh, important uh, uh, aspect that has to be taken into account would be the teacher training because uh, now we need to inculcate transversal skills among students such as reasoning, critical thinking, problem solving and collaborative working through pedagogies and assessments. And to do this, our uh, teachers should be well equipped. So that is another challenge. And I think that uh, it also says that we need to provide opportunities for internships, local industry, businesses, artists, crafts, persons, as well as uh, you know research internships. And for that, we need to involve several stakeholders that we need to partner with several other institutions to make this successful. And of course, the biggest problem would be to find financial resources to make sure, ensure that all this, uh, are, uh, uh, what do you say, arranged in an university is, would be the greatest challenge. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, Sujama, uh, your thought on this particular uh, question? May I repeat the question? Yeah, yeah and that's okay, uh, Mr. Baskin. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. All right, um, greetings from CMI University. You know, I, at the outset, I should like to thank uh, Mr. Bastin Thomas and the team Linbase for um, organizing such a forum. Um, it is uh, since uh, the uh, the implementation of NEP is indeed a huge challenge. Having said that, um, uh, let me put across that uh, the CMI University uh, has reimagined its curriculum way back in uh, 21, 22. Uh, with its preparation almost four years. Uh, we started preparing for this curriculum since 2016-17 uh, to put into place in 2021-22. So um, as, uh, as Dr. Melvin said that implementation of NEP is the challenge 
and of course the consequence thereof. Um, the 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 watchword of CMI University's curriculum is preparing students uh, on a holistic basis and preparing them to thrive in the university of life. Uh, thrive in the university of life in the sense that uh, they have to be prepared for a future which they do not know, for the jobs that do not exist today, and for all the life's challenges that it is going to throw up in the future. Um, in a nutshell, uh, to prepare them to face a very VUCA world, uh, you must be knowing what's a VUCA world. And so, um, as Dr. Melvin said that, we have put in place uh, uh, quite a bit of, um, uh, 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 quite a bit of uh, experiences that the students would undergo. Our entire curriculum is built on three pillars, which is preparing for success, knowing self and society and contributing to society. Under these three pillars, the entire curriculum is going to be uh, um, delivered to the students. Um, as uh, Dr. Melvin has said that um, it is a challenge in terms of implementation, offering interdisciplinary courses and multidisciplinary courses uh, in the sense that the faculty requirement and the resource requirement would be quite dynamic and we should be prepared for that. And one way of preparing for that is uh, the transaction being in a combination of synchronous mode, hybrid mode and asynchronous mode. When, when your delivery happens in a combination of this mode, to a large extent, we could mitigate it. Um, it wouldn't be a huge challenge if you look at that because now um, usage of technology uh, is, the, is, is the watchword. And um, since we have driven um, uh, in-house ERP, uh, which is an end-to-end -end automation of the entire uh, education experience with the driven in LMS and so on and so forth, um, I think that to a large extent, that challenge could be mitigated. So um, to uh, uh, students uh, to um, you know, develop a holistic personality um, is, is a huge challenge because we have to uh, change in the way we are going to teach, uh, with the way we, we are going to assist them, um, in, the, in the way the resources should be available for um, uh, educational infrastructure and so on and so forth. It's, it's a huge challenge. But I think that uh, what we were thinking and wo lo, we were quite elated when NEP had put across that because it is going to change our entire um, landscape of higher education. Uh, we are not going to produce just degree holders, but we are going to produce um, students who are able to you know, manage their professional and uh, personal life in a much better fashion. And they are ready for the job market and they are ready for the global educational requirement. So I think that, uh, um, I mean, put across is making some kind of um, sense. Yeah. Yes. Th thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, uh, Dr. Anil, sir. Anil Joseph, yeah. Yeah, uh, your thought so, on this topic. Yeah. yeah, two things. See, one is that the universities, uh, uh, especially in India today, am I audible clearly? Not audible. Yes, yes, yes sir. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they uh, they do not uh, necessarily look at the unique capabilities of students, uh, and uh, very few really focus on holistic uh, development. It comes from a different kind of a philosophy of education, and not everybody shares this uh, idea. Uh, some of the central, central universities uh, or IITs do that through more of a peer learning, but there are no really formal systems to encourage uh, uh, either new capabilities or uh, holistic development. But some of the other institutions, um, especially in the minority institutions that actually have had a long, long standing focus on holistic uh, uh, development, may not be on uh, unique, developing unique capabilities uh, fully. So which technically then says that uh, NEP will not answer that question. <laughs> So the framework that NDP has provided uh, will not necessarily uh, focus on providing um, unique capabilities, 
because it assumes certain categories of capabilities and say you develop on that. So, but certainly universities will have to do that uh, going beyond the, you know, uh, need of, uh, you know, a nation or a particular, but if you say, you know, human society, human civilization, then we certainly need to uh, help build uh, and a more just and equitable society. We will have to certainly focus on building uh, unique capabilities, but unique capability development does not lead to holistic development. These are technically two different things. So uh, holistic development would mean a completely different set of, you know, uh, campus uh, imagination, how you frame the life of a student on campus, uh, and curriculum is one part of it, uh, because even uh, although in any piece, uh, national uh, qualification framework, a credit framework says that um, there is nothing called co-curricular and curricular, but if you see this uh, national, the present UGC framework, it does make a strong distinction. There is not really a co-curricular fully is part of the curriculum. So, uh, I'm, so therefore, I presume that this curriculum framework will undergo some changes when the, uh, the, the national credit framework is released. Uh, but what, of course, uh, is certainly desirable that universities do focus on unique capabilities and host development, and that's how I think um, uh, a just and equitable society can be built. Um, may, uh, we would need to completely rethink a university uh, largely you know, uh, in how we imagine today, because first, would in, you know, uh, the identifying unique capabilities each student itself is a massive task. Uh, we will have to move into take the help of psychologists uh, primarily to develop two. That's only where a large university can do that, and then try and see you know what ways we can try and build that systems at the same time you know build a look at education far beyond the, uh, the, the even the credit framework itself is a wonderful idea. It's it's one of the best things that happened in the India in the last couple many decades, but I think far beyond that we we'll have to look at it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for your insights, uh, uh, Doctor Rajesh Agar, sir. Uh, hello, uh, Doctor Rajesh Agar, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. What's your thought on this particular uh, question, sir? Need I repeat the question? Uh, yeah, please. Uh, okay. The NEP is saying, recognizing, identifying, and fostering the unique capability of, capability of each student to promote his or her holistic development. What can we do as a university for achieving this vision? For example, to uh, I mean, uh, for holistic development, it says we thought that actually um, a particular student need to address, particular students need, need to be addressed. Address. That's what's our thought. Uh, so what's your thought in uh, this particular area, sir? Uh, uh, basically, as uh, I, I told in my earlier uh, uh, session, students today, especially in India, they are becoming a transformed mind as per the recent assessments and their behavioral changes and other things. Because of our social media and especially these digital devices are killing their real talent and the time. Now, the talent, what they possess compared to their earlier senior people, say five years, 10 years, elders, is, is amazing. There are some psychological studies done as well. That is what we believe because of our, this, the, the nature only, the nature only is transforming the new people with the new intelligence. Now, the responsibility on universities is really becoming a challenge and complex. The philosophy of the universities in earlier days as well now, the, the meaning real philosophy should, the educated people or the so-called leaders should provide the solutions to their local societies whether it is a societal solution or a technological solution, economic solution, whatever way best possible, they need to think differently and then bring some uh, visibility in the day-to-day -day activities of the local surrounding society who are not educated or so. In this process, when we say unique capabilities of a people to develop the holistic development. Now, a student has a capability in certain domains. Our education system, currently this multidisciplinary or minor, major, whatever the credit framework, NEP is, is coming out, really provides the payment to implement all that. The real challenge is the implementation means 
assessment of each individual candidate on continuous basis. We set one question paper of a few set of students. We expect all of them to understand the answer of all the questions and then score better way. In this process, if a student is not really interested in certain aspects of those questions or a subject, you will not focus on that. And we put a eligibility in all the subjects, he should have a pass mark, say 35 or 40. In some subjects, these students are not interested at all. We, we are imposing to study that and then do. Then ultimately what happens? They enter into by heart mode. This by heart mode of knowledge gaining is still writing exams only. In the process, what we did, we killed his time, her time of their own interest. We made them to work in a different domain where they are not interested. And the teachers and the whole system is working on that. The overhead of spending time and energy by all these resources yielding no outcomes. And whereas this person has talents in certain subjects or domains, we have not given more importance and then more encouragement, more inputs to the student to excel in these or our own field, then we are killing their talent at natural intelligence. This is where we need to work as investors. That is how we can bring the holistic education to inculcate and encourage the individual talents of a student. Do we have that time, energy, infrastructure, and mindset in the universities to meet the individual requirements? This is the biggest challenge. Each one of us, every teacher has to think, every organization has to think. And a digital system should support us. We have to bring clarity in that. You see, abroad developed countries, to the extent they are successful in this, they will not impose. Today we see after 12th PU, people are going for CT and other things. You see the enormous amount of press they are going ahead because it is, it is completely carried away by the scenario today. Engineering, medicine and other things. Why? People are not interested. It's a peer pressure, it's a parent's pressure, it's a friend's pressure, it's the organization's pressure. All these pressures are leading. Why the dropouts are happening in higher education? Why they have to only enter into IIMs and IITs? Why other institutions are not doing, not equally capable of handling such things? So this is a big question. We all as educationists, we have to think and then provide a solution. This is what I can say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for your insight. Uh, so, the next.